Hello guys and welcome to episode 5 of my Total War Warhammer playthrough playing as the Beastmen on very hard difficulty and today it looks like uh, we are going to be running away from Ostland. We have just sacked Castle von Rauken and raised it to the ground because we were being chased in this direction and we took advantage of that being out of the way. And now we'll likely probably head round towards maybe Gislev and Ostermark. Maybe we'll attack them as well. And then move down towards uh, Talibic land. Because currently we are being chased by them. Maybe we can loop them and come back round. Depends. I might not attack Gislev. Although they will be attacked by Chaos soon, so it might not matter. Yeah, we'll end the turn and I'll decide next turn what I want to do. Because we might be in turn... Or in range to attack Zavastra, and then we move down and attack the chief and like the turn after. And also, since we do have a Bray herd, that seems like an even better idea. So Goros did just spawn the Bray herd that we were planning for. Ambush discovered for Helmet Fearback. Okay. So yeah, what we're gonna do. I think we're going to attack Zavastra. It's just looking like a really nice ripe target for the taking. Let's level up, level up Morga to give him feasting upon man, first of all. And then we will move up Goros Heartrender and Morga. And we will attack Zavastra. So they have Krakadrak as their allies. That's okay, they're up north, I believe. So we won't have to worry about them. And Zavastra is going to be an easy take. No worries there. 109 lost. And I think what we're going to do is loot and raise this. I'm going to start saving some cash I think. And we're going to keep Morga near Goros. We will upgrade Suez Gore. To get the unrelenting war herd. Goros heart render can fe finish off feasting upon man now. And what we'll do is have the Suez Gore attack the Chafin. Okay, so we're going to declare war on them as well. And uh, although I would like to stick around to see Kislev's army chase me, uh, I think we, we are going to just go straight for the Chafin. So Talibic land, they're not exactly moving towards us, but they're not moving away from us either. They're kind of sticking around. But Chafin has been mobilized against by the Beastman Brayhard, and I'm not sure if Suez Gore is going to be in range to help us out with that, since we can attack it this turn. What I'm probably going to do is put us into Beastman Ambush. Uh, we'll get well. We get Goris Heartrender to start the siege, and we'll start getting siege equipment. I'll get Morgan to come over here as well and be in raiding stance. Actually, let's get Morgan to just be in Talibuk land, so we get extra income from that. We get 463 attack. That's quite nice, actually. Oh, it looks like the vampire counts were coming up to uh, Ostermark or Bachefin anyway. So we might have just uh, cut off their plans. So now our Bray herd has arrived and the vampire counts have as well. Alright, so let's bring Morga in uh, normal stance to Bachefin. And we will probably just auto resolve this. Because we do have the Bray Herd at our backs. So that was kind of the idea for me doing this. So, plenty of loot gained. And we can loot and raise that for some extra cash. That's absolutely brilliant. Got a couple of followers. And now, what we're going to do is target the Bray Herd towards Talibheim. And we're going to move towards Helmet Fuhrback. So. I'm not entirely sure what we want to do with the Bray Herd for this turn. I might not give it a target just yet. 
Can we maybe set the Brayherd target to our own? No, we can't. Just like I was saying the other day that I would love if they could follow us, but um, they can't, unfortunately. So I could go for Unholy resi Resilience for the minus wound recovery time and then go towards Corruption and maybe extra recruitment capacity and so on. But I think what we're going to do is go for Presence of Morslib now for the extra characters or a leadership effect. And we'll do the same on Morgar as well. Well, we already have. Um, but after that he can go for something else, I guess, then. I thought we didn't have it on on uh, Morgan yet, but we do. So that's uh, that's new. All right, let's go back into raiding stance with Morgan then, and move back into enemy territory. Right, we will end the turn there. And maybe since the vampire counts are dealing with Ostermark, maybe we can destroy Ostermark because Essen is still down there. And it won't be very well defended, I don't think. But we have a red moon, so what do we want to do? We're going to get extra casualty replenishment rate. Do we want to go for extra campaign map movement range or extra melee attack and, melee and weapon strength? I think we'll go for actually the casualty replenishment rate. And we will head down towards Essen. I think that's probably a pretty decent idea. We'll move into normal Beastman Ambush stance and we'll run down this way and we'll get uh, maybe the Brayherd to come with us. Yeah, that should make things a lot easier down there. So let's uh, yeah, bring Chorus Heartrender down. Morga can level up so we'll probably go for Ardor of Fury now that's his special ability passive ability so that when he's below 50% leadership he gets buffed for extra melee attack charge bonus speed and immune to psychology I mean it's not a massive buff unless we make him charge from unit to unit but I think it's definitely worth having for if things get a bit savage on the battlefield let's end the turn and head down towards Essen so it looks like the uh, Vampire Counts are going to be heading down here as well. Talibak land still sort of shadowing us in the trees. Beastman Brayherd is moving forwards. Those savages. Hopefully... Oh, we can... Can we attack Essen this turn? Oh, I think Morgo's actually in range. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Gorus Heartrender's just outside of range. So if we move in Morgo... and then have Goros follow us up. We should be able to crush them quite easily. Unless I just move into raiding stance. No, we'll move we'll come down here and back up. Uh, we'll back up Morga and maybe we'll wait for the Brayherd to arrive. Yeah, I think we'll do that. The Vampire Count's taking a lot of attrition in this land. Kalak Kadrin has united against us. Defiled Honor has also been complete. Extra missile damage for our ranged forces. Brilliant. Ruinous Rituals. We can either get extra Chaos Corruption and minus Horde Growth or just spare the warriors for total favor. I think we're going to go for the favor. I think we've read most of the messages now. If I didn't read that one before, then you can pause it, guys, and, and have a look yourself. But I think, yeah, I think that was it for now. All right, let's uh, end the turn. We will allow our Brayherd to catch up with us just so that we can uh, crush them on the battle map. I am probably going to play it out. That is the plan. So you guys will have something to watch, don't you worry. Let's get Morgan now and attack Essen. So we will have uh, Minotaurs and the Razorgore Chariots. We can see them at their full ability on the battle map. Let's quick save it and jump straight in.
So, here we are. And we're coming down from the hills. We have our Bray Herd ready to go. I uh, can't wait to run these Minotaurs into the enemy. They are so fun to use. We also have our Razor Gore Herd and the Chariots. So many good units that I just want to make use of in this battle. I'll probably honestly use the Bray Herd most of all to begin this battle. I reckon the Bray Herd might be able to destroy them all on their, on their own honestly. We'll start the battle and we will start to move towards our enemy. We will posture towards them. I'll probably send forwards Morga alongside Suez Gore and his buddies. So let's have them all line up in front of our main line. Then we will have Goros with his massive army come follow us up. I don't think he can get them all onto the battle map because we have so many armies. Or so many units. I just about managed to squeeze all of his, all of his units into the battlefield. Get all the melee units to uh, line up behind. We get all the raiders to uh, move up in front. So they have quite a few crossbowmen. We can just charge through them with the, the chariots, honestly, and also the Razor Gore herd. Oh, it looks like uh, some of our units are in range. That's not good. We'll move the Chaos Spawn back. I don't want any of my units to be in range, honestly. Not, not yet, anyway. I might get in the front line to fall back for now. Until our reinforcements have arrived. So we left a couple units behind. Let's get them to move forwards as well. We're going to group up all of the Ungor Raiders. And we will have them line up in front. Fortunately, they have Stork, so they can be hidden in the open, which is great. Until they get into range, of course. We will have Suez Gore's army split slightly to either side. We are going to take a bit of missile fire for doing this. But uh, we're good. I feel. Alright, so let's uh, run forwards our raiders now. And we'll have our units come in at the flanks onto their units. So we've got the chariots here. We can probably go straight through the crossbowmen. We have Suez Gore. And so on. Okay, I'm actually going to bring back the, uh, the line of raiders. And we're going to have our unit smash through on the right side as well. So we'll have unit of Minotaurs go for each of the uh, Swordsman units there. And we'll have our Spearmen move forwards and engage. What I'm probably going to do is have all of these chaps skirmish. And that way they will sort out their own targets when they get approached upon. And we'll start to run forwards Goris's herd. We have a lot of units. Okay, the chariots have just ruined the crossbowmen. We're running down the free company militia now as well. So what's happening here? The uh, Gore Herd with shields are engaging alongside Suez Gore. Suez Gore's doing a great job. Let's uh, get uh, Morga and the Gore Ball forwards into these engagements. Probably on the right side. Probably the best place. We'll have these Chaos Spawn get involved. Probably going to get my Harpies to target a unit of Crossbowmen that's a bit weaker. We'll get the uh, chariots to go for the free company militia now. And that will destroy them. Right, we've run down the units on the left. That's great. Let's now destroy the units in the centre. 
going to keep going through those free company militia, I think. And we'll begin to run down these crossbowmen. Chaos spawn just absolutely fantastic. They run so quickly. Also, the Minotaurs are not letting them get away anytime soon. Yeah, they've all been routed. This was pretty brutal, honestly. That's victory. <laughs> Did we even lose many men? That might have even been better than an auto-resolve. Decisive victory. We didn't give the gift of chaos to anyone, but that's fine. Got quite a lot of income from that. Oh, was that the gift of chaos that we got given? Oh, another gift of chaos. Extra melee defense and missile resistance. Awesome. So we are going to probably loot and raise again. Again, we're going to try and save as much cash as we can. And is that going to destroy... Ostermark? No, it hasn't. So where do they have left? So they got one settlement and it's down here, Fort Oberstar. Oh, okay, so it might be worth me heading down there and destroying that while I don't have to declare war on the uh, vampire counts, although me moving my armies through the vampire land seems like quite a bad idea due to vampiric corruption. Maybe it's time to just turn to uh, Talabek land. We might be able to get Suez Gore to uh, head towards Kemperbad. I think this turn we don't have to do anything. We will just put uh, Goros back into raiding stance so that he keeps up his bestial rage. We could also build up his uh, army in encamp stance, actually. We might do that. Yeah, we'll get the squalid encampment. I could get the mound of blades. Which gives us extra armor and melee attack for all units. That seems like a great idea. Is that all units for all armies or just all units in his army? That's the question. Because if it's for all units and all armies, then that's pretty damn amazing. I think that'll be for all units in his army. Since he does control all of the units at the moment, that might be a good, good idea. Although I kind of want to do that in Morga's army, if that's the case. Yeah, same with the uh, Pit Hovel. Now, I think we we want both of those in Morga's army just because he's going to be the one recruiting guys. So his Goreblood has leveled up, so we'll continue with the Unrelenting Warherd and we will end the turn there. So Talibak Land now moving forwards with their army. Hopefully we will discover them. It doesn't look like we did. Unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is maybe trigger that ambush. Don't know if it's a good idea or not. It kind of sounds like a bad idea. Hmm. How are we going to do this? We might be able to just uh, go round them and raid through the vampire count's lands. How are we going to do this? Because I want to target the Brayherd, obviously, towards Kempervad. Unless we get the Brayherd to go for Fort Oberstire. Actually, that might be a good idea, because then we won't actually have to send our army down there. We can just get them to go destroy them for us. And then this turn, we can try and run round Talibuk land. Where were they? They were like somewhere here. 
Which means if we go up, then we can just avoid them entirely. We can probably beast path over this forest. Seems like a plan. Yeah, let's end the turn. We'll let our Bray Herd carry on. Although it looks like the Bray Herd might have got attacked. No, well they did now. And Talibut Clan destroyed them, unfortunately. Beastman Bray Herd destroyed. The Savage Blow. Many conflicts are won or lost on the strength of the first vicious charge. Men are sent flying from the battlefield, often in pieces, even before the savagery of melee begins. A well-timed charge shatters enemy morale, as well as bodies. Blood and sweat may coat the victors, but victory is always painted in colours such as these. Those at the head of the charge seek ever greater thrills, ever more bloodshed. As the battles become bigger, the body count grows higher, and the trickles of blood become ever-flowing rivers of red. So the Savage Blow. Extra charge bonus for all units. Very nice. Okay, so now we're going to uh, basically beast path across to maybe Talapheim. I mean, their army was down here, so maybe that leaves Talapheim undefended. Yeah, we're going to jump up here and go straight for Talapheim, I feel. So we destroyed Bechafen and Essen. Castle von Raukum was taken back by Ostland. Wish it gave us like a list maybe of the places that we had raised because it's going to get pretty confusing trying to remember which 50 settlements I have raised or not raised. I know I've done Middenland and I know I've done Nordland. I know I've done Castle von Raukum and I now know that I've done Ostermark entirely. So that's good. We haven't done Fort Oberstire, although Fort Oberstire was taken by the Vampire Counts anyway. So that looks like Ostermark's dead, which is a start. And now we're approaching Talapai. Maybe we can destroy all of the settlements in Talabuk land. We'll have to see how this goes. We'll end the turn. Of course, everything's going to get pretty easy when Chaos arrives. The only issue with Chaos is they will be raising the settlements themselves. So that will make it harder for us to finish our objective. Ideally, we will have the majority of the enemy settlements raised before Chaos comes. Cracker Drac has been destroyed. So that's good. Let's move into a raiding stance now. And carry on towards Talapheim. It looks slightly defended, actually. Morga is very close to spawning a Bray Herd, actually. Maybe what we can do is uh, switch across some of the uh, units and spawn a Bray Herd after we attack Talapheim. That might be an idea. So we're currently making 665 a turn now. It's pretty good. Let's see if Hockland moves to defend Talibak land, like Talibak land moved to help defend them. It looks like they did not. Well, there we go. So now what we're going to do is probably give some of the army to Morga. Going to put him into, actually, Beastman Ambush Stance. We'll do the same with uh, Goros. The reason we're doing that is to avoid us from being tired in battle. We'll put all of the raiders up there and the chaos spawn. And then we will siege Talapheim. So let's go for a battering ram and then the towers. We will give the gift of chaos. Poison attacks, put to the gorbel actually and extra melee defense and missile resistance to the chaos spawn. They already have missile resistance, but extra missile resistance is always nice. Yeah, Goros can uh, move up here and help us out. 
I would put him into Raiding Stance. I think we might actually for this turn, because we aren't going to be assaulting this turn. Let's end the turn. So Hockland, we'll see if they actually come to help out. If anything, they just run away. That's fine by me. The Dark Moon. What do we want to get? When one falls, all damage units will be fully replenished. We don't need that right now, no matter how far. Extra campaign map movement range, but we don't need uh, tired units right now either. Ruinous Incentive gives, gives us extra Bestial Rage. That could prime Goros to spawn another Brayherd after... Yeah, could do that. So after our first army spawns a Bray Herd, we can do so again with Goros. Or we could go for minus recruitment cost, but minus melee defense. See, all of these are great in certain situations. But right now, they're all pretty terrible. I would love to have one that increased the melee attack and strength of my units, but the only decent one that I can use is probably Ruinous Incentive because I'm pretty sure we're fully replenished and we won't be replenishing this turn anyway because I'm sieging. I mean it will replenish my turns even if I am sieging but I am going to attack this turn. Actually that's maybe a good shout then. Yeah maybe we go for when one falls so that as soon as we've finish this attack on Talapheim, we can take as many losses as we want, and in the next turn, it won't matter. That's a great idea. Yeah, okay, so we'll do that. But, um, unfortunately, guys, not in this episode, as it has, unfortunately, been my time. So, what we're going to do, with that massive replenishment, is assault Talapheim, and... Yeah, basically take as many losses as we want to and then in the next turn we will just get all of our men back and then we'll maybe go and attack her gig straight away. That might work out really, really well, especially considering Hochland just moved their army to Brass Keep. And that will allow us to destroy Impossible. Hochland entirely, no. which will add to our raised settlements. Awesome. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, well, yeah, like I said, that's all unfortunately so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one I, I I'm loving the way that the beastmen play and I'm loving like the savage uh, gore and uh, you know blood pack that we have uh, added to the game it makes uh, the battles a lot more I, I don't know really how to explain it but you know a lot more sort of gory I guess <laughs> which is uh, quite fun to watch especially with the beastmen it, it kind of makes sense especially with a lot of the events that are popping up Anyway, that's all. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.